Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you some things you didn't know you could make in the Instant Pot. Hey everyone, I'm Kristen. I am sister number two from SixSistersStuff.com. And every Monday I share with you a new Instant Pot recipe. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and push that little bell so you can get all the notifications every time I post, especially if you love the Instant Pot, you're not gonna wanna miss my Monday recipes. I'm doing something a little bit different because I'm sharing with you maybe some things you didn't know you could make in the Instant Pot. Now there are many different things you can make in your Instant Pot. So today I'm just gonna share with you a few of them. Let's get to the kitchen and I'll show you how to do it. Number one, use the Instant Pot as a hot plate. Now here are my little burritos I'm gonna make. I have tomatoes, beans, corn, avocados, my salsa verde chicken, and some cheese. And I'll put my recipe for the salsa verde chicken up in that little dot in the corner. Now while I was putting these together, I pushed the saute button so it could start heating up. Then I just rolled up the tortilla and I'll put it right directly on the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now because this salsa verde chicken has some sauce involved in it, um, it gets a little bit messy and it's a little sticky. So if you stay away from anything with sauce that will leak out, it will be better off with this Instant Pot hot plate. So I'm just gonna let these sit there for about a minute or so until I can tell that it's turning brown or you can even start to smell it a little bit. It smells really good. So one was really easy to turn over. Now the second one, it was a little harder so I got a spatula so I could flip it over. Now when you turn it into a hot plate, you want to make sure it's cooked evenly on all sides. So I just cook it 30 seconds to a minute and then I'll flip it again. So it will be flipped four different times so I can get all of the sides. All right, when you are done, go ahead and take a spatula and pull it right out. Now beware, they are a little toasty and hot. So I let it cool just for a minute, and then I'm going to cut it in half. I love the melty cheesy part of it. Everyone loved it. Number two is refried beans inside the Instant Pot. Now, I forgot to film the very beginning part, so I have one pound of pinto beans and one onion chopped up into small pieces. Now, I've rinsed the pinto beans, so don't worry about that. Then I have a heaping teaspoon of garlic and a little bit of garlic salt. Next, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of cumin. This is a half a teaspoon, so that's why I'm doing two. Now the trick with the beans is that you need a lot of liquid, so I'm going to do four cups of chicken broth, so that's one whole container right here. And then I'm also going to add three cups of water. Your beans are all ready to go, we're going to put the lid on, make sure that it's on sealing, then I'm going to push manual and go all the way up to 45 minutes. If you don't have a manual, it also means high pressure or normal. Use whatever your machine has to make it pressurize. All right, so I let it stay in there for 15 minutes when it was done cooking, and then I took the lid off. So now the trick is you're going to drain out the liquid from your beans and then slowly add the liquid back in. I put one cup of liquid back in there and that's how I like my consistency, and then I'm going to smash my beans. If you want it thicker, maybe start with a half a cup and you can slowly add the liquid back into your beans. So my kids love bean burritos for lunches. So I like to put some foil down, then I'm gonna get a tortilla and put my beans into it. Now these are a little bit thinner beans. My kids like it better that way. Um, but if it was my choice, they'd be a little thicker. All right, so I'm gonna put just a little bit of beans down and then I just put cheese on top because it's just a bean and cheese burrito. Then you're gonna go ahead and roll it up and make sure you get the corners in tightly so you won't lose beans. Then I just do one piece of foil per burrito. So just roll it up so there's no places touching the air and then I stick these individual things right inside my freezer. Number three, you can make the best rice inside the Instant Pot. So you can do white rice or I like to use the brown rice. But today I'm gonna do my white rice. So usually when I make rice, I get comments that I didn't wash my rice 
I'm going to try harder to wash it. So I'm going to measure out one cup of rice, then I'm going to go and rinse it so that the water runs clear. Once it's all clear and all clean, I'm going to go ahead and dump my rice just right into the bottom of my Instant Pot. Now for me, I like to add one and one fourth cup of liquid per every cup of rice. So if you're gonna have two cups of rice, you're gonna have two and a half cups of liquid. And you can use water or chicken broth. Um, right now, I'm just using water, although I love using chicken broth. Then when you're done, go ahead and put the lid on. Make sure it's closed all the way and you're going to turn your knob to sealing, not venting. Now, lots of Instant Pot machines have a rice cooker, but there are some that don't. And so I'm going to go back to my manual. If you don't have a manual button, it's high pressure or normal, whatever it uses to make it pressurize. And then if you're doing brown rice, you're going to do 20 minutes. If you're doing white rice, you're going to go down to 8. Then you're going to let it release on its own. That's what the L means um, for about 5 to 10 minutes. So I'm 9 minutes close enough. I'm going to flip the knob over to venting and open up my lid. Then when you're all done, you just go ahead and mix your rice around. Now if you love jasmine rice, jasmine rice in the Instant Pot is delicious. All right, number four, Instant Pot Strawberry Jam. Now this is a little bit healthier version of strawberry jam because I don't love it with a ton of sugar. So I'm gonna take a pound of strawberries, take the green off, and then you wanna slice your strawberries. You can cut them in half or in fourths, whatever works best for you. I like to cut them in smaller pieces. Next, you're just gonna dump your strawberries right into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now spread them out a little bit so that the strawberries are touching the bottom of the Instant Pot. All right, then we're gonna add 1 8th cup of sugar. Only 1 8th for a pound of strawberries is pretty good. Next, you're going to add about an ounce of orange juice. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's not a ton of liquid, but I'm telling you, it'll work because of the strawberries release juices too. So you're going to put your lid on, make sure it's on sealing, not venting, and you're going to go to manual or normal pressure for one minute. Now, when your timer goes off, it's going to start counting up. That's what the L is for. So you want it to stay in there for 15 minutes. Then you're going to do a quick release and open up your lid. So now you have a few options. If you want your jam a lot thicker, go ahead and push the saute button and get out the rest of those juices, or you can stick it in your blender. But for me, I like to use a masher because I like my jam thick with strawberry chunks in it. Now this is what my mom calls freezer jam. So you can put it in little containers and stick it in your freezer, but I'm just gonna stick mine right into my fridge because my kids are going to down it as soon as they get home from school. Now, like I said before, if you want this a little bit thicker, leave it in your Instant Pot and push the saute button and watch it. Let your liquid kind of dissolve and it will become thicker. This jam is also delicious on ice cream, if you were wondering. All right, number five, we are making popcorn in the Instant Pot. So you're gonna start by pushing the saute button. The next button you're gonna push is called adjust. You want the little light, the red light, to go over to more. All right, so we added two tablespoons of oil. I used vegetable oil. Then I'm going to dump one fourth cup of my popcorn kernels in there. Now, the first time I made it, I just left my popcorn kernels on the side like that. I do not recommend doing that because they don't pop very good. So if you spread them out, make sure they're all covered in oil, then they will start popping. Now you can do more than a fourth of a cup. You can do a half a cup. Just make sure you add four tablespoons of oil. All right, my popcorn is all done popping. So now I'm just going to open it up, make sure it's good and push and cancel it. So turn off my Instant Pot. Now you want to take all of the popcorn out of the bottom of the pan and leave the oil on the bottom before you add ingredients, you add butter, you add whatever you want into your popcorn. Take it out, then add your ingredients. Right now, my favorite popcorn is my mom's caramel popcorn. It's delicious. Now, if you have an Instant Pot, make sure you join my Instant Pot Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description for you. And thank you so much for joining me today on my Instant Pot Mondays. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And if you are subscribed, make sure you push the little bell so you can get all of the notifications every time I post. 
All right, guys. Have a good week. See you later.